The following is beta video instructions for building an overhead water rocket launcher. Everybody likes to get sprayed by the water rocket. This overhead design allows kids to gather safely underneath without danger of being hit by the rocket on the way up. You can get most of the materials from a home center with a good plumbing section. Half inch Schedule 40 PVC, not CPVC, pipe comes in 10 foot sections. You need one section. You can ask them to cut four feet off if it makes it easier to transport. You also need a one and a half inch piece of pipe, but you only need two inches of that. See if you can wrangle two inches from somebody. You need a half inch slip T, just one. Slip means you can glue it onto the pipe. You need two half inch end caps. You need one each threaded adapter, one with internal threads and one with external threads. And for those threads, a small roll of Teflon thread tape. For gluing, a small can of PVC pipe cement, one pipe clamp that opens to at least an inch diameter, eight eight inch plastic ties. You'll probably find them in the electrical section of the store. From any auto parts store, you'll find a stem. Then around the house, you're likely to already have sandpaper, drill and drill bits, pliers, tape measure, candle, duct tape, twine, several soda bottles, and an air pump. Here's the pipe cut list. It adds up to 10 feet. A hacksaw works well for cutting. Before we can glue the pipe together, we have to take care of the valve that gets the compressed air into the launcher. So drill a half inch hole in the end of an end cap. Regardless of whether you use a drill press or a hand drill, hold on to the end cap with a pair of pliers. Back up your drilling with a piece of scrap wood and hold on tight. Clean out the chips with a fingernail to ensure a good seal. Make sure the valve cap is on so when you grab it with the pliers, it won't mar the threads. The plastic needs to seat in this groove. So you need to pull it through really hard and maybe twist and turn it a bit to get it through. With the valve in, now you can glue. So it'll go like this. Another end cap to the 18 inch piece of pipe. The other end of the 18 inch piece to a T. The two inch piece into the middle of the T and the cap and valve onto the other end of the two inch piece. The T to the 30 inch piece takes us up to the threaded adapters. These allow us to unscrew the launcher for easy transport and storage. Then it's on to the 48 or four foot piece and there's nothing on the other end. I sand the surfaces both inside and outside that will glue together and it seems to work but be warned that you're supposed to use a primer before you use the glue. It seems I always have to use big pliers to get the pipe cement open, but then I close it really tight too so it doesn't dry out. Put the pipe cement both inside and outside and quickly push them together. Solvent cement is really nasty stuff and you should be doing this outside. I couldn't with darkness and rain, but I had a great cross breeze. The adapters get glued on too, but don't get glue on the threads. When you're done, it'll look something like this. 
Now's a good time to put the Teflon thread tape on. Five or six wraps keeps the connection from leaking, and if you can wrap it in the direction I'm showing, you can avoid having it peel off as you twist it in. It's time to go to the top where the bottle will be. Push the pipe in so it almost hits the end of the bottle, but not quite touching. Mark a ring all the way around the pipe. If you want a measurement, it's about 11 inches from the end of the pipe. We're not going to burn the plastic pipe, but we are going to soften it up with a candle. You don't have to do this, but if you have a few dowels that will fit snugly into the pipe, it'll keep the pipe perfectly straight as you soften it. Keep the pipe at least an inch and a half away from the flame, and keep it moving, rotating, after a minute or two, if you don't have the sticks in the pipe, you'll be able to bend it. But what we really want to do is push both ends inward hard. And when you do that, it makes a bump all the way around the pipe from here to here. This time when you push the bottle on, it should get stuck on the bump. And that's where it seals. The pinch between the bump and the bottle will contain the water and air, even under pressure. A bunch of plastic ties will hold the bottle on by the handle. You need eight plastic ties. Mark them five inches from the end and cut them at five inches. Lay them next to each other like this. Make sure the heads are on top. Tape a ruler or a straight edge down to even the heads of the ties. Then push all the heads together. The bottom of the ties should be parallel. They should not converge. Cut off a piece of duct tape a little bit longer than the bunch of ties is wide. Line it up with the ends and really press hard to make it stick. Carefully flip over the assembly and sandwich the ties with another piece of duct tape. Trim the tape, but leave a little bit sticking out. The tie assembly will go on like this, but they won't hold the bottle on unless something keeps them from spreading out. That something is the bigger inch and a half diameter PVC pipe. You only need a two inch piece. If you cut it with the miter saw, the edge is nice and square. But hacksaws are notorious for cutting crooked. But if you wrap the pipe with a piece of paper and draw a circle all the way around, you can cut a little, rotate the pipe, cut a little more, rotate the pipe, and eventually make a nice straight cut. This is the trigger, and a very crooked cut could affect the function, so it's more than just looks. For the pull string, I used a piece of old bailing twine because I like to recycle things. Whatever you use, choose a drill bit about the same diameter. Drill a hole near the end, but not so near the end that it might break out. Thread it from the inside to the outside. Then tie a knot on the outside. I tie a double overhand knot, but I think most any knot will do.